I am a mother of two girls who have cystinaria, which is a rare kidney disease. And they produce kidney stones all the time. And there's no cure. Um, they can't process amino acids. Uh, it's a high protein process. We all have cysteine that passes through our kidneys. And in this case, they can't transport it back out. And so it clumps up very quickly and becomes stones. And they're very jagged and hard. And um, they need, usually require surgical intervention to remove. So they can go anywhere from the size of a pea to a staghorn as big as the inside of a kidney. And it can happen within hours. And in some cases, it may be a month before it grows to so big that it has to come out. My daughter almost missed her wedding by having a stone on her, on her wedding day. At 4 a.m., we finally got word that it had passed, so she was going to make it to her, her wedding. So. The biggest med right now that has been introduced is to keeping um, a lot of people are on potassium citrate to keep the pH of the urine way up, like on the higher end of normal versus 6.0. We'd want it closer to 8, but not over 8, because then you're sick. So you have to balance your urine uh, and the output, obviously. Urine tests every six months to check the levels of cysteine that are in the urine, the saturation of it. Um, so that another interrupter is to do 24-hour urine tests, uh, carrying a jug with you. In some cases, they're refrigerated. Some companies don't require refrigeration. Um, there, there are only two medications that are commonly used to help the uh, crystals not clump together as quickly but the key is still the amount of water that someone would drink. In trying to find other parents or patients that had cystinaria that could share with me what to expect, I started a Facebook page for International Cystinaria. And it started with uh, eight years ago, I had four people on my page, and today I have 653 people on the page. Now, they're not all patients, and they're not all caregivers. Some are uh, partners or uh, a new girlfriend trying to learn about it for her boyfriend and, and I've learned a lot. I've learned from some people who have cystinaria past no stones at all and some are starting dialysis and one just had a transplant in order to survive. So it takes its toll in all different ways. I attend as much as I can about the rare community of diseases, talking to people. We're working with a pharma company right now that's helping us um, put together our web page so it's up and active um, so that hopefully if people key in what their disease diagnosis is they'll be able to find us to share more information to give them direction we're working on trying to develop best standard practices for physicians because one doctor might want to try a shock therapy for you and another one will want to open you up and those may not be the best options to try first and foremost um, we need to talk about dialysis, transplantation in the future. So there's, we're trying to connect with as many networks as we can to say, how did you get there? You were small once and now everybody knows you. How did you get there? And we're trying to get there as well. We're working with Retrofin. They've helped us get people to go to the symposium by helping financially. They've given us a grant to do that. Um, they've just been wonderfully supportive because they work with the rare disease community. So. I know farmers don't get a very good name, but in this case, I think you run into a few that are really there for the right reason, which is nice.